नमस्कार एंड वेलकम टू सरी आई क्यू आई एम योर फ्रेंड राहुल साईगांवकर लेट्स कंटिन्यू आर डिस्कशन ऑफ एनसीआरटी साइंस सीरीज यू ऑलरेडी नो वी आर डिस्कसिंग टेक्स्ट बुक फॉर क्लास नाइन एंड टूडेज एजेंडा इज टू डिस्कस चैप्टर ट्वेल्व दैट इज साउंड आई होप यू रिमेंबर वट वी डिस्कस इन आर प्रीवियस इंट्रैक्शन इन चैप्टर इलेवन वी डिस्कस अबाउट वर्क एनर्जी एंड पावर वी डिस्कस वट इज रिलेशनशिप बिटवीन वर्क एंड फोर्स what is the relationship between work and energy we discuss two kinds of energies we broadly classify energy into two kinetic and potential we also discussed about the law of conservation of energy and eventually we ended our discussion with the concept of power power is nothing but rate of doing work we also discussed about the units today we'll continue our discussion and talk about sound by now you already have a lot of knowledge about sound because when we discuss different chapters from class 6 class 7 class 8 we have understood some notion about sound and we'll try to build on that knowledge so some discussion might seem redundant to you but nonetheless it will be like a revision for you right let's begin our interaction but before that you do know study iq is releasing its flagship program prelims to interview initiative in fact the classes have started from june 19 just the orientation session is over the geography classes have begun you can still enroll for this if you have already enrolled i'll see you in the class but if you have not you would be missing out on the most comprehensive program for upsc civil services preparation so just go to our website www.studyiq.com and enroll for this now you still have time till 30th june and in the meantime we are also running optional mela that is the grand optional sale is going on where there are heavy discounts on the optionals that we offer there is optional of political science sociology history this geography this hindi literature also just go to our website www.studyiq.com and do enroll for our op optional courses as well because the admission for all the batches are closing around 25th june go there right let's begin our discussion sound now see we hear sound every day right now you are listening to my voice my sound we hear sound of the birds chirping we hear sounds of the wind we hear sounds of the traffic right sometimes there is sound of thunder baby crying so many sounds we do hear and we have already established why do we hear that in our previous interaction when we discussed sound chapter from class 8 we understood how humans produce sound we produce sound from the voice box the larynx that we have two thin cords are there which continuously vibrate that means vibrating material or vibrating objects they produce sound waves and these sound waves they continuously travel to matter right now they are traveling through air they can travel to matter so all these things have been established right so how is sound produced again the basic chapter talks about sound production sound is produced whenever there is a vibrating object humans produce it from their larynx how do we perceive it we have also discussed that before we perceive it through our ears it's a reverse process that means sound waves they reach inside our ear there is a ear drum which vibrates and the signals from that reach our brain so that we understand that sound we hear that sound we perceive that sound so sound is produced by some sort of vibration here if you just simply vibrate a tuning fork see that the sound waves are produced and if you put the tuning fork in a glass of water you will see the energy is transferred into that water and the water waves will also be visible right so what have we established till now we said that sound is produced again class 7 class 8 discussion sound is produced by a back and forth motion called as vibration sound is basically a form of energy and this energy moves in form of vibration from one place to another place sound can be produced by a drum sound can be produced by a guitar a tuning fork the larynx the voice box that we have it produces sound that's why the sound is reaching to you i am producing the sound the vibrating molecules they are being recorded by the mic which is reaching to the software then it is being transmitted to you eventually that's how sound moves so sound how does it propagate we know sound always needs a medium to propagate that means what is the speed of sound in vacuum the speed of sound is absolutely zero in vacuum because sound cannot travel in vacuum sound needs some matter for it to travel because sound is traveling as a wave where the energy is transferred through different particles say if the sound is traveling in this particular direction from point a to point b there are different matter and we have already established that matter is composed of different atoms molecules right so these atoms will continuously move and transfer the energy from point a to point b and for that 
we need some matter it might be air it might be air particles it might be liquid it might be water or it might be even solid so sound travels through air we do know that when a si when a siren siren produces sound this the sound is transmitted through vibration this vibration is taking taken by air so air molecules vibrate and transfer the energy similarly water molecules vibrate they transfer the energy all right right next the question is sir how does that travel exactly what is the format i told you sound travels as a wave and sound is a longitudinal wave i'm repeating this sound is a longitudinal wave all right now when i say longitudinal wave that means see this tuning fork it is vibrating and since it's vibrating it's producing sound that means the neighboring atoms in the molecules they are also vibrating and when it travels as a wave it travels as a composition of different compressions and rarefactions you can see here there are many molecules which have higher energy here that means many uh, or, or the matter is compressed in one form that means it forms the crest of the wave and then there are rarefactions rarefaction means there is where there is a there is a gap between the atoms and molecules here so sound travels as a means or as a wave comprised of compressions and rarefaction so it's a longitudinal wave it's not a transverse wave although we can transfer this longitudinal wave on a on a transfer map for sure so how is it how is sound traveling sound travels say for example a spring this spring gives you example of a longitudinal wave in a, in a slinky you can see you just you just pull it and leave it you will see how the wave propagates you will see some compressions rarefactions compressions rarefactions so every compression corresponds to say the crest of the wave and rarefaction corresponds to the trough of the wave so once we translate this for instance when the speaker is speaking what is happening there is some sort of density variation and density variation because of vibration of the molecules there are many molecules many atoms here which are vibrating which are transferring energy compression then there is a rarefaction compression then there is a rarefaction all right so we can if we translate this into a wave you will get you will get a pattern like this so what are the characteristics of this we have also discussed that the meaning of frequency amplitude loudness which will just we'll just see what exactly are these features quickly as i told you sound is a longitudinal wave now this is how we represent it when we draw it on a map so there is compression rarefaction that means the wave can be drawn something like this where there is a crest that means this, this is the top this is crest then there is a trough trough means the lowest point lowest energy point so in this particular wave we can we can define certain parameters of these waves and that's how we say these are the characteristics of sound or sound waves how do we define them there are different characteristics there is amplitude amplitude is the height of this waveform height of this waveform is called amplitude so this is amplitude this can also become amplitude no issues that means how do we define it first through the amplitude if the amplitude is high that means the sound would be very very louder then there is a concept of wavelength what is a wavelength wavelength is basically basically a length from length from say uh, one compression to the next successive compression or rarefaction for instance if i simply draw a wave like this this would become one wavelength one wavelength all right so it can it can be a length from here to here here to here whatever you can define okay so if if the sound wave has higher wavelength then it is going to travel travel uh, for a longer distance apart from that we also measure one more parameter called as time for one cycle time for one cycle now this time for one cycle is time taken by two consecutive compressions or two consecutive rarefactions to cross one particular fixed point so we will measure that in seconds so when we invert that time period we get the concept of frequency this frequency is denoted by the greek term nu we all know that this is called nu nu is equal to 1 by t this is this is frequency this is called as frequency and based on this frequency we have already discussed what is pitch we'll talk about that also so these are some of the characteristics of wave that we discussed and again based on the amplitude based on the frequency we define two more terms one is loudness loudness depends on amplitude i'm repeating this loudness depends on amplitude the higher the amplitude the louder the sound means the amplitude as it becomes larger 
I'll, I'll, I'll listen to the sound in a, in a very higher manner, right? The, the uh, sound is very, very loud. Similarly, there is another quantity called as pitch. This pitch depends on the idea of frequency. Frequency. So, higher is the frequency, higher is the pitch. As I told you, many a times if a mosquito comes near my ear, it's a, it's a high pitch sound. That means the frequency that the mosquito is, the sound that mosquito is producing, the frequency is very, very high. It's very shrill to our, to our ears, isn't it? So, when we talk about this, if I say a sound is soft sound or a very loud sound. When I say something is soft, that means its amplitude is low. Just look at this amplitude. The way you distribute something like this, where the amplitude is very low. Soft sound. But if I say sound is very loud, I simply shout, right? There's a movie by a movie of Shammi Kapoor, right? He says Yahoo, right? <laughs> There's a song. So that Yahoo is a very loud sound. When he when he says Yahoo, that means it's a louder sound. Just look at the amplitude of this. The amplitude is high. So higher the amplitude, then louder the sound. Lower the amplitude, softer is the sound. Very similarly, the, the idea of pitch. Pitch means see a waveform, a wave shape of a low pitch sound is something like this, where you will see that if I if I am talking about a distance something like this in this particular distance you will see only one or one and a, one and a quarter of a wave but in the same distance if i check a high pitch sound in a high pitch sound the number of waveforms in the same distance is very very high that means the frequency of the sound is very very high so if it is high frequency it would be high pitched sound low frequency it is low pitched sound now, based on this amplitude, based on this pitch, based on uh, this loudness, we talk about different features of sound waves. For example, something is music for our ears, something is noise. It is based on these parameters itself, right? Now, apart from this, we also understand that the idea of loudness of the sound is measured in terms of decibel. We have discussed this before. So, decibel is in form of a logarithmic scale, right? Meaning, if one sound is twice the sound, that means a sound is just to be twice as loud as another, if its sound level is about 10 decibels higher. Why? 10 decibels because it is in logarithmic scale. The normal breathing sound that comes to our ears is about 10 decibels, very small. If somebody is whispering, say if, if somebody is talking on their phone and if they are whispering, that would be probably 10 to 20 decibels. Soft whisper is about 30 decibels. Then a normal conversation is 50 to 60 decibels. Right now, the sound that I am producing, the loudness of that is approximately 50 to 60 decibel sound. Now, apart from that, as I told you, something is music to our ears, something is noise. And this quality, it's called timber of the sound. The timber of the sound, it depends on the pitch and loudness of the sound or the note that is produced. What, what, when do we say something is music? Some music or if, if you have studied music, there are some notes or and quotes which are written in the, in the musical book. There are different notes. Those different notes are depending on the concept of tone. So, a sound wave which is very pleasant to our ears, which is called rich in quality. And once it is rich in quality, the frequency changes are very subtle. And a single frequency sound, it is called as tone. So, whenever we listen to music, we see that the sound would be something like this. It would sound, it would, it would the waveform would be something like this where it is a single frequency sound. It will be pleasant for us to hear. But if it is some sort of a noise, the noise waveform is something like this. And again, I told you there is a, there is a very, a very strange distinction which is, which is slowly and steadily, I would say, uh, getting diluted these days. There is, there is rock, there is metal and there is classical music. So, classical music have waveforms something like this where you will see single note, single tone. But these days, even uh, high metallic, right, Th that has also become music to some people. But in general, in general, the waveform of the noise is something like this and the waveform of music or a tone is something like this. Clear? Right. Now, apart from this, some very important development in chapter 9 is connected to the speed of sound and with respect to our audible range. We'll talk about audible range in some time, but speed of sound. The speed of sound is basically defined as a distance which a point on a wave such as a compression or a rarefaction, it travels in unit time. So basically, 
distance can be calculated in form of a wavelength divided by its time period. So, if we talk about speed of the sound, it becomes simply wavelength of the sound wave divided by the time it travels. So, that is that becomes h lambda. Lambda is wavelength, nu is the frequency. So, so basically, v is equal to lambda into nu. That's the basic equation. But when we calculate the speed of sound, there are different derivations and we end up with this formula also where speed of sound is equal to square root of square root of gamma rt where gamma is basically this ratio of specific heats r is the gas constant which has a which has a constant value t is the absolute temperature so that means the speed of sound it depends on specific heat that means the matter through which it is traveling is it traveling through air is it traveling through water is it traveling through some solid it also depends on temperature temperature and when we put at 0 degree celsius that, that means at 273 kelvin we get the speed of sound to be 331 meter per second in air at about 0 degree celsius all right so what we have established is speed of sound it depends on the matter it depends on the specific heat of that matter and also temperature so speed of sound is the highest in solids it is lowest in gas forms and it is somewhere in the middle in liquid. Now, this is the example from the NCRT itself. You can see here the speed of sound at 25 degrees Celsius through these metals is extremely high. Look at the speed in meter per second. In aluminum, it is 6420 meter per second. Similarly, in case of air, I am talking about 25 degrees Celsius. At 0 degree Celsius, it is 331 meter per second. But at 25 degrees Celsius, it is about 346 meter per second so air gases there is lower sound of speed to liquids it is much higher and it is the highest in solids please remember this particular fact simple mcq can be created that speed of the sound is maximum in which which medium or speed of the sound is maximum among which of these say i give options as uh, copper i give option as uh, argon i give option as uh, water and none of the above on in all it is equal four options can be created some questions like that can be made right apart from this there is a very important phenomena that we need to understand sound wave have certain characters we have discussed in our previous interaction about light and the loss of reflection there are two laws of reflection first the incident light and the reflected light they would have equal angle to the normal to the normal to the reflecting surface and all the three the incident ray reflected ray and the normal they would lie in a same plane. The same laws also apply to sound. Please remember, sound waves are also reflected. That means, if incident energy is, is hitting some particular surface, it would be reflected in other direction. And please remember, the angle of incidence and angle of reflection of sound would be same. And also, the normal to the reflecting surfaces, all the three would be in same plane. Please remember, Sound follows the same laws of reflection. Very, very important pointer. So, does sound reflect? Of course, it reflects. We do know that. And based on this itself, there are certain there are certain characteristics of sound which have been developed. For example, which have been defined, I would say, something called as echo. What is an echo? Echo is nothing but reflection of this sound. When I when I'm speaking, if you're listening to some sort of echo in the sound, then there is there is problem in the acoustics of the room. I'm quite sure. Yes, maybe some amount of sound echoing would be there because it would be very tough to eliminate. But in uh, in general, when you when you when you speak in a say in an empty room, you will see that sound if it is it is absorbed in a very less way, then it would be reflected higher more and more. And echoes are basically sound waves which are repeated because sound waves are reflected back and forth. Sound is reflected off the walls. Sound is reflected off the floor it is reflected off the ceiling from everywhere and you must have you must have heard these echoes for sure many a times if you if you visit some some sort of ancient historical uh, place you will see that you uh, you make a noise or you make a sound from one place the echo would be heard again your you would hear your own voice back you must have seen that if you have visited bijapur in karnataka there is a place called bijapur golgumbas it is said that it has it produces amazing echoing sound so if you visit Karnataka next time, do go to Bijapur. There is also a place in Kerala. Right? I'm quite sure many people know about this. In Kerala, there is an eco point Munnar. 
right you you make a sound the sound is echoed multiple times at this echo point why because sound is being reflected so does the sound reflect of course the sound reflects because of that we see echo we see echo the concept of echo all right now apart from this there is one more idea of reverberation reverberation now reverberation is a sound which is created because of multiple reflections because of repeated reflections of sound for example see echo now when you see if, if i create one particular sound now if the light if the sound wave is reflected that becomes your co concept of echo but many a times if you're sitting in a big auditorium you will see that the sound reverberates also what is the meaning of reverberation whatever you're speaking that sound is not dying down immediately the sound is staying in the auditorium or in that particular place for some amount of time say for two seconds three seconds you must have experienced especially if you're in a college and if you're in your auditorium you must have seen the sound reverberate you speak and it, the sound is not dying down right say uh, say in an auditorium when the when the uh, first person comes whoever announces he says good morning then good morning good morning good morning three four times the sound reverberates that's the concept of reverberation reverberation is a result of repeated reflection of the sound and this we have seen mostly in auditoriums in empty halls as i told you in the in the room also if you are able to listen to my sound or my voice again and again that is reverberation and if it was possible to turn this camera you would have seen that in the studio there are sound absorbing material there are a few curtains there are a few curtains and there are sound absorbing acoustic panels which are connected or which are which are stuck here so that the sound is not reflected multiple times and that reverberation effect is not seen because if that reverberation effect was seen you would have heard something like this when i say Today we are going to discuss sound, say sound, 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 reverberation of that particular term or that particular sound. And to eliminate that, of course, we use many things. As I told you, uh, you can go for a rough kind of plastering, you can go for draperies, you can go for uh, some sort of compressed fireboards. These days you get many acoustic panels, special sound absorbing acoustic panels, which you can use to reduce the reverberation effect or the multiple echoing effect. Now, this is, this is what I am talking about elimination. But many a times, what we use is we use the idea of multiple reflections. Since we know sound reflects, we use the idea of multiple reflections because it has a lot of utility. For instance, if somebody is using a megaphone, these days, everybody is using a megaphone. I can see, I can see these days hawkers who are selling vegetables, who are selling any other equipment. They are using these kind of megaphones. Simply record, <laughs> they record, record this sound and that is, uh, that is, uh, uh, that is audible till long distance why because it is louder sound it uses the concept of multiple reflection the same thing happens with horn so we see that megaphones the loud hailers the horns the musical instruments or the shahnais they all use some kind of multiple reflection methodology to produce higher sound similarly doctors use stethoscope doctors use stethoscope the step right step. now how do you how do you listen to that how do you listen to the heartbeat the doctor when he puts on the step right he listens to the heartbeat lub dub lub dub based on the idea of multiple reflection still the sound is very slow but still till it reaches the ears by multiple reflections you can hear it as an audible sound similarly you must have seen to avoid multiple reflections to avoid multiple reflections if you are in your college you must have seen the auditorium would generally be like a dome structure or there are many sound absorbing materials as i told you different kinds of uh, draperies uh, different different rough plasters, fireboards, etc. are used so that sound does not reflect multiple times. Same thing in the studio also. In the studio, I do not want the sound to be repeated. I don't want multiple reflections of the sound. That's why some equipments or some setup has been done. Right? Now, next is the idea of audibility of sound. We have already established in our previous discussions that human ear we perceive the sound on the basis of that eardrum itself. That means the vibration, the vibration of molecules or atoms, it reaches till the eardrum, the eardrum vibrates and that fine vibration, the, the signals from that fine vibration, they reach to brain and we sense sound. And what is the audible range that, that the eardrum or that, is, that we can identify, that we can sense, that we can hear? 
is 20 hertz to 20,000 hertz. So basically, the audible range for humans, human audible range is 20 hertz to 20,000 hertz. Right? I hope I hope you do remember that. Basically, uh, if you want to remember it, you can remember it as 20 hertz to 20 kilohertz. 20 kilohertz. That's the audible sound that we can hear. But but there are many other sounds that are produced. In general, when we look at the wavelength spectrum of uh, or the frequency spectrum of sound, we say this is the acoustic hearing from 20 hertz to 20 kilohertz. This is the acoustic hearing range for humans. This is the human audible range. It's the human audible range. Right? But any frequency which is lower than 20 hertz, whose frequency is say 19 hertz, 15 hertz, 10 hertz, 5 hertz, it is called as infrasound called infrasound infrasound acoustic range which we can hear and then it then the higher higher frequencies ultrasound infrasound means very very low frequency waves very low frequency sound waves infrasound these infrasounds are normally the earthquake waves you do you do know from your geography knowledge right p wave s wave etc those are all those are all uh, very low frequency waves those are infrasound waves low frequency that means very high wavelength. That means they can travel long distance. All right. Now, apart from that, please remember infrasound, very low frequency sound, are also produced by some animals. Rhinoceroses, they communicate using infrasound of around 5 hertz, as low as 5 hertz. Apart from rhinoceros, there are also some whales and some elephants that produce sound in the infrasound range. Infrasound range means, say, from 1 hertz to 19 hertz, less than the audible range. So please remember there are some animals, there are some animals which produce very low frequency sound and there are some animals which produce very high frequency sound as well. That means more than 20 kilohertz. For example, especially bats. Now you do know bats have a concept of echolation. That means they cannot see. They use the concept of echolation. As you can see, the uh, reflection of sound, it helps bat to navigate. The bats produce some sort of ultrasound. As soon as they, they see the signal back, that means they understand there is there is a an obstruction. They turn, right? So some dolphins, some bats, some animals like uh, porpoises, they produce ultrasound, ultrasound frequency sound. Also, please remember that acoustic range is this, and ultrasound is anything about twenty kilohertz. And many a times these uh, ultrasounds, ultrasound frequency, ultrasounds are used in many applications. Ultrasound frequency, it can travel along well-defined paths in presence of obstacles. That means if there are some, some sort of obstacles, uh, it travels, since it is traveling with high frequency, it travels in a defined path. Many times it can even remove that obstruction. It has higher energy, all right? Uh, it's, it has higher frequency. So ultrasounds are generally used, used to reach places where it is very hard to reach. Ultrasounds are also used in uh, sonar navigation, ultrasounds are used in uh, many, in, in cleaning equipments, ultrasounds are used to clean uh, parts that are hard to reach, for example, a spiral tube or electronic component where I do not want something to be destroyed or something to be uh, degraded, I use ultrasound, ultrasound or ultrasonic waves, ultrasonic waves, apart from that, ultrasonic waves are also used to find or detect cracks in metal bodies, since they travel in very defined path. Now I see if the ultrasound is reflected, I I check I check the signal and I understand if there is a crack, if there is a loss of signal, there is a crack or there is a defect. Apart from that, ultrasonic waves are also made to reflect from various parts. That is used for medical imaging. You can see here, uh, animal hearing is sometimes animal hearing in ultrasound range is there. Then there is medical therapy, medical therapy. Then there is acoustic uh, microscopy also in very high frequency range around uh, 200 megahertz etc. But there are many applications. For example, you must have heard about ultrasound scanning. Ultrasound scanning. Ultrasound scanning is done to understand the to understand the uh, get the images of internal organs in human body. Ultrasound scanning is done uh, for for the brain, for the kidneys, for the lungs, liver, etc. So, ultrasound waves they travel through the tissues of our body and get reflected from the region where there is a change in tissue density and on the basis of that we get ultrasound imaging you do know that ultrasonography is banned for 
for identifying the gender under the PCP NDT Act. All right. But ultrasound is used in uh, medical equipment. They are used to generate different images of the organs. They are displayed on the monitor and then you get the report, etc. I am quite sure at one point or the other time, you or your relatives, they must have gotten the ultrasound, ultrasound for sure, right? Uh, to to uh, even to examine the pregnancy, to examine fetus during the pregnancy, especially for congenital and other abnormalities. Please remember, during pregnancy, right, ultrasound, ultrasonography, cannot be done or it is illegal to use ultrasonography to find the sex of the fetus under the PCP NDT Act. Apart from that, ultrasound is also employed these days. We have got ultrasound, uh, ultrasound kind of a surgeries. So, the so small stones are broken up in kidney. There is no need for invasive surgery. Simply use, simply use high frequency ultrasound to break these stones, to break the calcium stones which are uh, which are in the kidney or which are in the ureter where they break and they can pass through urine automatically without any sort of invasive procedures. Some medical treatment methods have been developed. So, ultrasound has uh, many applications. As you can see, ultrasound has these many applications. So, question can be formed, MCQ or any kind of a question can be created on this as well. Right? So, that is the basic understanding of chapter sound from class 11. That is the end of today's discussion. We will meet very soon with our subsequent discussion. Thank you for watching this. And if you have liked this video, you can always follow me on the social media handle at the rate Rahul Sai 222. Thank you for watching this again. Jai Hind.